Hey y'all, I'm Betsy from Happily Ever After Etc. and welcome back to another Cricut video. So today I'm going to be showing you how to engrave butter spreaders, cheese spreaders, these little knives that you use to spread butter or um, cheese balls, anything like that around the holiday times. I love to make cheese balls and put them on my cute little serving boards or cutting boards to take to events, friends, family, holiday things. They're quick, they're easy, they're cheap. Everyone loves them except those who can't eat dairy. And I can put them together fairly quick. So last year I made one for Christmas. This year I'm making one for my Friendsgiving table or Thanksgiving. I'm just having some friends over. Um, and I wanted some that matched my really cute little cutting board. That's what I was thinking. So I found these at a local discount store with wooden handles. Love them. Jen over at Well Crafted Studio, I saw this tutorial first from her, but hers were flat, completely flat from top to bottom, so they could kind of lay on the cutting mat a little better. These were a little more difficult. She was able to engrave. Girls, we're filming. She was able to engrave more of the metal here, whereas I was only able to engrave the ends. So if you want to check that out, I will leave her link down below. She is the queen of all things engraving. So I'm sure if you don't follow this tutorial from her, you will follow a different one. She is very inspirational. I'm going to show you how I adapted her tutorial to engrave things with handles. So we're going to go ahead and jump in. And then at the end, I will show you a close up. All right, y'all. So we've got our files loaded into Cricut Design Space, but before we can align them on our cutting mat in the Cricut Design Space software, we have to actually line up our physical uh, spreaders here on our actual cutting mat. So you can order these, not these specific ones. You can order spreaders online. You can pick them up lots of different places. I will try to link below to some similar ones. These I picked up um, $10 <laughs> at a store um, a couple towns over that I don't even remember the name of the store. Like it was not, it was not a normal one. It was a weird store I've never seen before, but I just thought these were so cute and they would match my actual, I have a large kind of wooden serving board that I use for cheese balls and things like that charcuterie boards so I thought these would be so cute and three of them had great space to engrave and so I'm just doing a very basic engraving I I, I don't even want to say designed because I literally just kind of typed my words out but we're going to go ahead and I will um show you how I'm going to use these so they're so cute. I think these two will give us really good places to engrave. This one will have to be careful. I did spread, <laughs> spread love, spread happiness, and this little tiny one I'm going to do spread joy. And I just think that will work for any occasion, not just Thanksgiving or Christmas, but anytime I want to use these. Because last year I did a big cheese ball for Christmas and I borrowed some of spreaders from my mom that were specifically for Christmas. But then I wanted to do something for Thanksgiving and that didn't work. So either way, it's, it's irrelevant. We're going to go ahead and we're going to put these on our cutting mat. So I've got a strong grip cutting mat. And then we are also going to use some uh, blue painter's tape. Now, the thing with engraving is that while our Mac has to go through our machine, obviously the handles cannot. Only the metal can go through. And so we're going to have to place these at the very bottom of our cutting mat. And so not only will the handles have to be off the edge here, but there's like a 25% of an inch, 0.25 of the bottom of this cutting mat that we can't engrave. So we can actually only engrave this part of our knives. Now we can 
we can actually, you know, we can push these up a little bit, but they do best at the edge. Now I have only done this once before and I did not film it, but I followed Jen over at Well Crafted Studios tutorial and it worked amazing, but those were with flatter handled spreaders. Um, I'll link to her tutorial below. And if you have a flat handled spreader that you can put right here, that's perfect. But I thought, you know what, for 10 bucks, let's see what we can do with these chunkier handles. So let's go ahead and get these taped on and then we will see what we can do. So unveil our cutting mat here. Now, I think our best course of action I find is to line up the blade with the center of a line. That way I know the center of my words needs to be on the three inch line or the five inch line because we're going to have to hand position that. So I'm going to go ahead and, and line this up with the three. Press it on. Let's go underneath here so that y'all can still see. And now I'm going to use some tape, if I can find the end, to really secure it. We want that blade to be flat on our cutting mat. So make sure it's tucked in nice and tight. There we go, that's actually pretty good. And then I'm going to do a little bit at the top as well. We don't wanna do too much because we'll be engraving on this end, but a little bit never hurt anybody. All right, so now, Let's do our next piece. So this one, let's do on, I think the five, that way it's an inch away. So if this is our three, for the five, come all the way down. And again, we're going to center it, not necessarily on the knife, but on where we want our engraving to be. Perfect. Oop. does not want to stick as as easily as the flatter one that's what the tape is for okay Get it lined up tape it down perfect doing good I know that was weird, but I wanted to make sure I didn't put this down too far over that blade, so. Okay, last but not least, we're going to do this one on the seven. These need to stay in place to go through the machine a smidge, but they also need to stay in place as our piece is engraving. So I'm going to do a little bit of tape where I know I'm not engraving to just help hold these in place. Sorry if you just lost your eardrums. 
dogs are very excited about these engravers. All right, that should be pretty good. So now essentially the, the open areas that you can see are really where our engravings can be. So the designs are already sized. We just have to line them up on those axes. So each of our designs is no more than a quarter inch wide. So if we put that quarter inch here right on the three, you can see right on the five, right on the seven, we should be clear in all three places. And then we will get started. So we are going to go ahead and line those up. We want to line up the edges with exactly where we are here on either side. So the top, the edge of this piece should really be, let's line it up here, three and a half or 10 and a half on the bottom here. And then we'll do the second one here, should be really more like a little further down, more like 10 and three quarters. Those are really almost straight and a half. So we'll do 10 and a half, 10 and a half maybe 1075. This one is going to be more right on the 11 line. Okay. So I'm going to go over to Cricut Design Space and we're going to line these up perfectly with our cutting mat, make sure they all fit. Then we will be back to put them in the machine with our engraving bit. See you in a minute. All right, y'all. So you can see I have all three of my phrases here. Spread love, spread happiness, spread joy. Um, all set. They are the proper sizes for each of my spreaders. Um, I've included files for either a single line or a double line, like the spread happiness, depending on what you'd like to use for your particular spreader. But um, like I said, this is literally just the, I don't even know how to say it, Bebas New um, font that I've used. So you can do this with any font that is able to be engraved. So once you load them in, you want to double check that they're the right size for your spreaders. I know that these will work with my spreaders. And depending on whether you're looking for a single line or a double line, they should work with most spreaders. Then you'll switch it from the cut. It, it loads all of your design files, SVGs, and with a basic cut. I switched it to engrave and you can see that it is already set on my maker three. That's the machine we'll be using. You can only engrave with your maker at the moment. So whether you're using a maker or a maker three, you'll select that from this list here. We're using the maker three today. Then we're going to click make it. So it's going to put these on our cutting mat in the best way it knows how, not necessarily how we want them. So we're just going to grab this little uh, spinny icon, hold shift, and spin it however you want it. So for spread, we want it to be this direction. We're going to go ahead and we're going to put them all so they're reading in the same direction. So all of them are going to be up and down, up and down. Perfect. Now we are going to take them to the bottom here and spread will be our first one. And we're going to center it right on that three. So right here with this red border, this is what I was talking about. That bottom quarter of an inch here, we cannot place anything. So we're going to just snug this up as close to the line as we can. And on that three. So you can see that it is under our window here of under that 10 and a half and above the 12. So then spread love, we will do the same thing, grab it, bring it down to the five. It's also under that 10 and a half. And then the joy will be on the seven. And you can see that that is the smallest one for that little tapered knife, but it should fit, okay? So now we're gonna go ahead and hit continue. From here, it has to find my maker. It takes a minute every time. 
Perfect. So now we're going to browse all materials. Let's see what comes up under metal. Aluminum, metal, stainless steel. I think that's our best option because these knives are stainless steel. Perfect. Now we are going to do default of more pressure and it is telling us to load our engraving tool in clamp B, okay? Now the engraving tool has three settings and it is saying to use the 41, which is the lightest um, of the engraving tips. I will go ahead and switch back to the overview mode now and show you exactly what that looks like as we load our mat. But from here, all we're going to do is load and hit go. So we are done with the computer portion of this little project. All right, so moment of truth. We are going to go ahead and change out our regular cut tip for our engraving tip. Dun -da -da -dun. So here is our engraving tip and we need the lightest one, the 41, which it is marked with this single, single line right here. All right, so put it in clamp B. Dun -da -da -dun. Ta -da. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and load our cutting mat. And you will see that it will pull it all the way up, but it does not pull the handles through. And that is the goal here. Get it under both sides. And we will cross our fingers. This engraves properly because. All right, so it's telling me longer mat required. Project requires a 12 by 12 inch mat. And that's because when it tried to pull it in, it hit, it hit the bottom of our knives. So I'm gonna go ahead and do it again, but hold it up so that it doesn't hit. So we're gonna have to watch it. Remember how sometimes even I do crazy things? I was trying to use my foil tip as an engraving tip. So the 41 references this 41 right here that's clearly visible on the engraving tip that works with the smart adaptation system here, the quick change. So we're gonna load this in, see if maybe that works better. I haven't done this in a minute and apparently I lost my brain in between now and then. Okay, take two.
All right, so these two look like they worked fine, but this one for some reason was way too far up. So let's take these off, see what we can do. We might need to flip this one over to the other side further down. I think it's because as this went in, it told the entire machine that this area was up here. We'll find out. All right, so tape begun. But hey, if two out of the three worked, I will be happy with that. It worked, it's just at the very end. That's kind of silly, isn't it? This is definitely why the shorter or the less chunky handles are a little better. Oh, that one's pretty good. Spread happiness. This one just barely says spread joy on the tip. Only the very end can be joyful. All right, y'all. So this worked, but I think the flatter handle ones like Jen used, um, I don't have the ones I made before I gave them to a friend. They definitely worked better, but you could easily engrave a shorter word or shape. I think the handles just really prevent it from going all the way in to utilize that space, but it did work. They do look cuter than they did. I like them anyways. The other thing we could do would be to add something to the handle, but I don't know. I kind of like it just like this. All right. I'm going to see if I can't get the other side. And if not, we'll just be a little joyful. Not a lot, just a little. Well, that definitely worked better as in you can see the whole word, but it's still just at the very end. So I, I probably wouldn't recommend engraving this shape of spreader. I would probably stick to your, your longer, flatter pieces where you're able to more accurately place that setting. And if you are buying pieces, I will link below. The flatter spreaders I think are even better, but I wanted to use these wooden ones and I definitely think it was worth, it was worth engraving them. I like how they're engraved. I just would like them better if I could engrave the whole width, but you know, working with what I've got, I'm pretty happy with it. So I'm going to go and, um, put these with my bigger board and see how they look. All right, so we are all done. I love how they turned out. I'm still like, don't think I would suggest engraving these. And the set that I found um, on Amazon that has very similar wooden handles is all this shape. So the traditional kind of butter spreader shape. So that would be great. You could get six of these and engrave them all, which kind of thinking I might do now that I've worked the kinks out of this whole process. So 
I love how they turned out. I do think I will be making more of them so that I can have a full set. I don't know that I want to ever put this little guy out. Maybe for family, you know, nobody else will care but me. <laughs> but at least that leaves me with three good cutters and spreaders for cheese balls and other neat charcuterie boards. So I'm gonna give y'all a close, close, close up look, but I hope you liked this project. If you did, like, comment, subscribe, tell your friends, show your mom. I will see you in the next video. Bye y'all. I guess we should make a cheese ball now, just for me. That's a thing, right? Lady, what you doing? Sugar, what you doing? Come on, girls, let's go.